Welcome back to the news today. This is a one on one. Today we have the pleasure of welcoming Mr. Shaul Mufaz, currently member of Israeli parliament and also former Israeli defense minister, the 16th IDF chief of staff, chief of uh, staff and former head of the opposition in the Israeli parliament. Mr. Shaul Mufaz, thank you very much uh, for coming to our Good state. evening, Lucy. Um, you know, just today we heard um, a senior Israeli official saying that the Hamas started rebuilding the infrastructure, uh, its infrastructure in the Gaza Strip, rebuilding the rocket uh, supply, rebuilding the tunnels. And you know, one of the biggest promises in, in, in this operation, the current operation, Operation Protective Edge, uh, one of the biggest promises to the Israeli public was we're going to demolish Hamas, we're going to hurt Hamas, we're going to demilitarize Hamas, we are going to destroy Hamas. No one is really one. No one really wanted to destroy Hamas. More than that, it seems that it works very good for Israel that Hamas is still in the Gaza Strip. Lucy, uh, I will start by saying that uh, this round, uh, I mean a protective edge was a long one, 50 days. It was very hard for two sides. It was harder for the Hamas. The Hamas has been weakened uh, and they lost assets, they lost infrastructures. We lost people and soldiers. But the main question is what will happen a day after? My proposal, I prepared a proposal and presented to Netanyahu, speaks about demilitarization for rehabilitation of the Palestinian people in Gaza. I believe that the Hamas doesn't have the right to continue to shell rockets against the state of Israel, to continue to build attack tunnels against the state of Israel. We have to make sure that the Hamas is demilitarized. We, there are two options to demilitarize Hamas. One by agreement, I mean agreement of the moderate coalition in the Middle East, Egypt, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, the Emirates, with the support of the Western countries as well. And the other alternative is by force. I prefer to try and to do our best to achieve a full demilitarization of Gaza from rockets, missiles, tunnel attacks, instead of doing it by force. So um, explain, try to explain to a naive person like me, uh, how come Israel is talking with Hamas? Israel is not demilitarizing Hamas. Israel is, on the contrary, basically not making even maybe the key solution, which is Mahmoud Abbas, uh, stronger in the, the area, which he can be not only a key solution to Hamas and to what is happening in this region, he can be a, also a key solution to Iran and to the entire uh, strategical, let's say, view that Benjamin Netanyahu was trying to look towards the future. So it's not only Iran, it's not only uh, the Palestinian issue, it's also the war against Daesh, the go against IS. So what am I missing here? Is Israel <laughs> well, blind to this, or well, Israel is playing a totally different game that I'm not aware of? Well, uh, Lucy, I usually say that the situation is very complicated, but, but the picture is very clear. You see, we see ISIS in our region gaining more and more power, controlling uh, some uh, areas in the northern part of Iraq and continuing to control in the northern part of Syria, uh, behaving uh, journalists and people uh, in a very cruel way. Hamas is the same like ISIS. They do the same. They kidnapped three of our teenagers three months ago, and they murdered them in a very cruel way. We don't have the picture, but we have the voices. It was, for us, it was a very, very painful. They have hostages, 1.8 million people, hostages in Gaza, I mean the Hamas. The ISIS has today some 100,000 in Mosul and in Raqqa in Syria. And we have to be very careful. Today we had uh, President Obama speaking about a coalition that will fight against uh, ISIS in order to demonstrate uh, power and to destroy the ISIS power. I believe that the same coalition should be in the Middle East with the moderate countries and to do first by agreement. I believe that demilitarization for rehabilitation will be phase one according to what you said about uh, 
a future agreement with the Palestinians. I believe that we have to move forward and to have an agreement with the Palestinians. When we speak about two-state solution, we speak about a demilitarized Palestinian state. But when you're talking about uh, Daesh is Hamas and Hamas is Daesh, still Israel is talking with this Daesh slash Hamas. Well, it Israel is, uh, is trying to reach know, an agreement, is, not with the moderate uh, forces, not with uh, Mahmoud Abbas, not with the one that can actually secure the region, but Israel is trying to reach with Daesh. An well, agreement. Uh, Lucy, my policy is to, to speak with uh, the Palestinian people, I mean to the, with the Palestinian Authority. The negotiation with the Hamas is indirect negotiation. We have uh, Egyptian as a moderate, and uh, they are uh, uh, doing their best. I be believe that the policy of uh, uh, President Sisi is uh, totally different than what the Mursi uh, implemented in his time. And there is a chance, there is a chance that Egypt with Saudi Arabia and the Emirates will lead to a different situation in Gaza because the people in Gaza, they don't have to be hostages of uh, Hamas, of Ismail Haniya and Khaled Mashal enjoying his life in a television that have a state in, uh, in Qatar. You know why I'm asking you these questions? You know why I'm pointing this specifically? Because you were there. You were the person who took the decisions. You were the person who knew what are the threats towards Israel. And I believe that the threats didn't change a lot um, during the last uh, few years. Maybe they got bigger, but didn't change a lot. It seems that um, this time Israel didn't get it right. It seems times that there were some mistakes in this operation. And this operation might be a turning point for Israel. Well, it is too early to speak about mistakes, but I will tell you what is my view uh, a day after, two weeks after uh, Protective Age. First, it was too long. It was too long, 50 days, regarding a confrontation with a terror organization. Is it too long? It was some kind of attrition war against the state of Israel. We cannot offer attrition war against the state of Israel. We have to be very short and more strong, but sh shorter uh, engagement with, uh, with the Hamas. And the second mistake, if I could say that, is that the military achievement was not channeled to a political settlement. And it should be during the operation and not one or two months after the operation, because I'm not sure that we will have a meeting in Egypt uh, next month and what will be the result of the meeting next month. It is hard to predict and hard to say. But we should be stronger in the way that we are dealing with terror organizations, and we should be very precise about the goals that we have to achieve a day after, mainly the politica political settlements and the political goals a day after the military achievements. A day after the military achievement, let me try to put it this way, it's going to be the, the next operation that we're headed to? Well, uh, Ismail Haniya mentioned yesterday, and uh, we, uh, we heard today uh, from uh, official uh, Israelis uh, uh, that uh, the Hamas is uh, already started to prepare themselves for the next round. And I believe that I'm against the next round. And I believe that there is a way to settle the situation in Gaza in a different way. Uh, How? It means it means that they should decide. I mean, Hamas, Abu Mazen, as well, to do his best. Egypt, uh, the Emirates, the, the Western countries, that Gaza should be demilitarized, and we will give. I mean, the the moderate countries will give to the Palestinian people a strategic economic package of 50 billion dollars in five years in order to improve the life in Gaza. The, the infrastructure, the education, the health, the jobs, and in this way to move forward about a regional agreement with the Palestinians and with the moderate countries, Arab moderate countries as well. Um, let's hope that uh, we won't see the next round, at least not so soon. Uh, we're still uh, rebuilding ourselves uh, after the last round. Mr. Shaul Mufaz, thank you very much uh, thank for you very coming much, to our studio. And thank you, our viewers, for being with us tonight. Tomorrow we'll be here at the same time, same place from the Jaffa Port, Israel. Have peace. Have a great night.